Today, I come to the Flag Island. The Flag Island is located near the government department's building in Alaya, next to El Jubail Market, and the flagpole at the Flag Island was the seventh tallest in the world at the opening date on the 2nd of December 2012. And it's a lovely area. It has turned out to be an amazing new tourist attraction. And I come here today to meet Dr. Mansour Malik and hear about his interesting story and his time spent in Sharjah. So this is where we, we're going to hear about you, you know, who is Dr. Mansour Malik? Thank you very much, Ismail Bullock, inviting me for this great program and it's a great place. This is the Sharjah Flag Island, a really impressive and very pleasant. Myself is humble man, but my background is that I'm a lawyer from UK. I studied law there. I graduated from the University of London. Then I opened my law office, which became very popular. And it happened that I, I won one case from the Supreme Court of uh, United Kingdom, which became a landmark case in the UK history. Oh, okay. And this way, I helped a lots of people, almost dealt with all nationalities, and very successfully. And then, at point, I moved here. So we're talking, uh, just to take you back to, what, what, are we t what time are we talking about here? I mean, I don't want to make you sound old or anything, but we're talking about back, when I'm were you back in the UK? I'm talking about the 1984. Okay. And 85, and I studied my complete, completed my study, and then I opened my law office in 1990 in London. It was very difficult for a non-English person to open a law office, and many people discouraged me, but I have a courage, and with grace of God, I succeeded to the extent that my law case become the precedent in the legal history. And at some time, the lawyers were joking, cutting jokes on me about that case. I thought, I will win. They say, you might have to lose money because pay money from your pocket. I said, yes, I will do that, but I'm going to win it. Thank God I won it. Then uh, French television, European television, BBC, all came to my office to record and ask me about that case. Great. So then you mentioned that you started or you, you came over to, to the UAE, to Sharjah, to the UAE. But, you know, when was this? And, you know, what was, what was the reason and, uh, that you came over here? Yeah, this is another strange reason. I, in London, I met one person, Abdullah As-Salami. He happened to be working with the immigration as a director. And he met me by chance in a place and he asked myself uh, some help, which I understood that his small son is in the hospital, Great Portland uh, Hospital. I went uh, there to speak with the doctor to help him because I understood that his English was not that great. And then he became my very close friend. He started inviting me to come to visit us. And actually this is Abdullah Salami. Although he was from, I think originally Ras al Khaimah, but he was living in Dubai, but he is the person who brought me to Sharjah. And that time Sharjah was the crown of the cities of UAE. It was so beautiful. We have so many good uh, memories about it. And I actually loved it since that time. And whenever Sharjah is there, it gives you a pleasure. And I feel Sharjah is a place of culture, is a place of peace, is a place of business is a place of education, and it is a pearl of the Gulf Arab countries, if I may say so, in my best judgment. It's interesting because, you know, you mentioned the fact that somebody from the UAE, UAE invited you, and we see that a lot, right? A lot of people, they say that whether it's before they came here or when they came here, how the people here are very hospitable, always welcoming. So you see that this person, he was welcoming you before you even came here. Yes. So we, and we see this with a lot, of, a lot of the stories. Now, before you came here, what were the first, you know, what were the, you know, what were the, uh, the impressions or the ideas that you had, what 
Sharjah or, or what the UAE would be like? What was your preconceptions, you could say? Because the UAE is a, is a very young country. In 1971, it got, the, got united. And I did not have this view that it could be that beautiful even at that stage. When I came, and I was really surprised and I was so happy I didn't want to go back. And um, so, but when you, actually, when you actually arrived in Sharjah, what were your first impressions when you got here? When I arrived and entered in Sharjah, I was amazed to see the view, mm. the uh, natural buildings, Arabic culture and tradition and clean atmosphere and on the roads, uh, this, the, 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 the seaside. It was 1990 that I came on the invitation of Abdullah al Salami, a UAE citizen, and I visited Sharjah. It was so beautiful. He invited me and took me to so many restaurants, and then we see their souk and other cultural places. It was very, very impressive. So then we can say that definitely your first impressions of Sharjah and the UAE were great first impressions. Yes, I had a first impression, very great. Since that time, I see Sharjah as an icon of even UAE because Sharjah is keeping all that good tradition, culture, and those type of uh, adat and taqaleed that really impresses the, uh, the Arabic culture. The customs and the traditions. Customs and tradition like that. You can see how developed Sharjah has become, how they, they become a hub now for business, but at the same time, they are very uh, uh, focused and they love to keep, the, uh, especially the culture, like you mentioned, the education. We know that uh, Sharjah, in reality, is, is we could even class it maybe as the, the capital when it comes to culture and education in, the, in, in many aspects in the region. Um, and we know it's been named as fact uh, a few years ago as the cultural capital of the world, if I, if I remember correctly. It is very correct. When I was here and I came many times, and I, it was known as the capital of education and capital of culture. And Sharjah still holds that status until this day. And that is a great thing. Talking about um, Sharjah, apart from this beautiful flag island we're sitting at now, with this you know amazing building behind us with Arabic calligraphy, the coffee shop, the beautiful island. I mean, this itself. But I mean, what other places do you you know do, do you really like uh, within within Sharjah uh, that you know that have a special meaning to you? Uh, whether it be a building, whether it be a, a natural place, everyone has something that stands out to them. Yes, uh, Sharjah actually it impressed me. They are the old souk. That is, you see the like a bazaar, very yeah. popular, and see the people, natural, traditional, rich and poor, and their local things are there. Then there are the, this jewelry mar market, also very impressive, and very nice design jewelry and gift shops. And many times my guests came, and I brought them specially over here, and they were very happy to buy things from Sharjah. I mean, you mentioned the old souk, and we know now that around that old souk area, they have restored and brought back to life the whole traditional area. So you have the uh, Al Arsa souk area, you have the 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 fort of Sheikh uh, Sheikh Sagar, you have the all the traditional houses, the calligraphy museum, so many wonderful places to, to visit. You know, so definitely the old souk is something that even I can recall. Uh, I mean, I came I came here four years after you, 1994, when I first came. And I remember that going to the old souk was something, especially if you're, for anybody I think in charge of, whether citizen or resident, going to the old souk was always very nostalgic and always, I used to really enjoy it, you know? Uh, and it's definitely a place that we see people until today, tourists, residents, people from inside Sharjah, from outside Sharjah, everyone comes to those, the, the, you know, those, those, uh, those touristic heritage sites as well as the kind of site we're at now, we can see this is buzzing with, not bu buzzing with nature as we can hear from the birds, but buzzing with people. So Sharjah, as we know, is full of those kind of places. So when you first arrived, some people have an issue with this, a cultural challenge. Did you feel that when you arrived here that you faced any of these cultural challenges? Actually, uh, other way around, when I arrived here, I feel 
people very friendly, very hospitable, and people don't feel stranger over here. I felt that I came to a, my home country. So this is a great credit go to them. And about the Sharjah special thing is that, that I must uh, praise and give my all the, uh, the, the good words and greetings to the Sheikh of Sharjah, Sheikh Dr. Sultan, that because he's very highly educated, very well respected, and he understood the, 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 the real, the fabric of the Arab society. So he tried to kept it in education, in culture, in tradition, in customs, that way. It happened once time that uh, uh, a delegation came from UK and some European together, my friends, and they arrived in Dubai and they see this and then they met me next day. They said that we came here but we didn't see Arab <laughs> type of thing. Where is Arabic culture? I said, yes, there is a lot of Arabic culture and I actually uh, booked right uh, the transport for them. I brought them Sharjah. When I show them around, they were so fascinated. They said, thank you very much. This is what we wanted to see. Because other things, if we are like, just like UK or Europe, so they're all cities are there. So this uh, Sharjah is keeping that fabric, which is a credible type of thing, and it impresses people. And, and like you said, this is, you know, this is like, you know, that's where we can see the name is very befitting, is the cultural capital. Um, now, we talked about before, the fact that you were a lawyer. Now, when you came over here, did you continue in law? Because I know you're also the, if I can remember correctly, the, the president and the chairman of the Diplomat Business Club. Yes. So did you come over straight away and open a business club? Did you practice law? How did your journey? What I did that, uh, I have a son, so he, in very young age, he become diplomat. And then I thought that maybe take out, why not to bring out a diplomat magazine over here, ah, interesting. which I did it, and it was very successful for last uh, 10, 11 years it was published, and now it is online. Even I published a few things about Sharjah, nice. and the one Sheikh of Sharjah also met me, and then his program I attended, and he really appreciated. And thereafter we set up a diplomat business club in London, and also here, and that diplomat business club means that we try to arrange the like a meeting place for diplomats and businessmen. So that is very helpful. And just because of pandemic, we were planning uh, one event over here in the Sharjah where we bring all the diplomats from UAE and then invite all the Sharjah uh, Chamber of Commerce and businessmen to get them a rendezvous, right? So they have a good meeting and they exchange ideas. And also there is one, I think, need, which I may say that Sharjah needs a little more marketing because people need to know Sharjah more if they know these things. I know my personal experience doing business in Sharjah is much, much cheaper and reasonable cost-wise for international companies. Then, and yeah. all those facilities, which the international companies need, they are available over here. So much the, the accommodation is reasonable, office costs are reasonable, staff, accommodation, whatever. So I think this aspect, I would be very happy to highlight it. <laughs> when we do the, uh, our event in London, we do it in the parliament, London parliament, our diplomat business club, where we invite all the business companies, very top class, and the diplomats and other people. And I think the next time we will try through you, through Sharjah TV, that if the a delegation from Sharjah, say economic department or others, they like to come on our invitation to London and they give their presentation right in the parliament to the all international companies. Sounds like a great idea. So that's, that's very interesting what, what you're doing now. That's uh, very interesting. to serve and because and people when the people in return 
they will try or we can organize one big event over here with your sports with the government sport over here and bring all the international companies not only uk but europe and other countries like even united states and just to showcase it for them to see with their eyes and stay here two three days and they may be there they will set up their companies and open factories over so here. so we can definitely say you know Sharjah is a, a cultural hub an education hub a business hub yes. it has everything well that's uh, that that's that's basically Sharjah you know it has everything yes it has everything it is very rich in all these aspects and maybe less exposed outside which we need to do it <laughs>
not just a developed country, it's become, you could say, in many aspects, leaders. They've become the leaders in many aspects of, 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 of things that we see in the world, which is really amazing that Sharjah and the UAE were able to do so in such a, such a short period of time. And you yourself have seen how business, how it's become a business hub of the world, hasn't it? Yes, it is, because I see if the same thing they want to do in Britain or Europe, it takes years to get the planning permission because of the system, democracy, consultation, parliament approval, disapproval. Here, the system is more closer to God, system, natural. The kingdoms, sheikhdom, so the, they are so visionary leadership of UAE, all states actually, that they have vision and they have a mission to deliver things. They do the right decision, there is no corruption, there is no time wasting, there is no greed, Rather, they want to do good things for this country that the people benefit and investors benefit. Investors are very happy, no tax, right? Where else exactly. in the world right you to be? That's why the business person is attractive to here, do business and get the money in your pocket. I never seen the color of my money in London. I was making million of pounds, right? But I was asking my accountant, where is this money? all gone to tax man. <laughs> we are here, I can see the color of money, right? Because what I earn, it is my money. So definitely, there's definitely that aspect of, you know, uh, a, a, really, a really safe lifestyle, yes. secure lifestyle, uh, a comfortable lifestyle yes. for, for many. And even those who may not, you know, make the most of money, they, if they were working somewhere else, they may earn more money, for example, yes. they don't have safety. Or in reality, they may earn the same amount of money, but fear for their safety. So we can definitely, you know, see here that there's so many, so many benefits. That you, you see, the, I see my one friend. He's in London. He he's the one richest pe people in United Kingdom. Millions and billions of. But I see his life is nothing, because he has to do many things by his hands. Too many uh, problems mates, these servants, you can't get it here. The system here, whenever he comes and he said, I want to, how I move here? I want to live here, but his business is there. I said, you just start doing business over here and stay rest of life over here. That's right, I mean, a lot of people's uh, dream or goal is to move to the Sharjah and the UAE, definitely. Yeah, yes. Well, it's been fantastic talking to you, Doc. You've given us some very really interesting facts of all these years that you've been here. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me for this uh, great program. I'm very happy to express my feelings, my views about Sharjah and its system and opportunities over here. So really appreciating. It's our pleasure to have you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you.